Hey mamas, welcome back to the sensory system series. Today we're going to be covering everything you need to know about our proprioceptive sensory system. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome to Kids OT Help. My name is Nicole. I am a pediatric occupational therapist and I specialize in feeding, but on this channel we do all things child development as well as self-care tips for moms. I am so excited to share. I have Rachel here with me. Hi Rachel from the Hi. Sensory Project. And as the name implies, she is the sensory queen. So if you guys don't know, follow her over on Instagram. I will link everything down in the description box for you. She gives awesome tips and breaks down so much knowledge about our sensory system. So wonderful resource for you all. So it's such a privilege to have her here today with us to talk about our proprioceptive sensory system. Hey, Rachel. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Are you kidding? Thank you for joining <laughs> us today. So today we're going to start by explaining what proprioception is, how the system works, some potential indicators that your child might need some assistance with regulating this system, and some strategies to help. All right, you guys, the proprioceptive system is amazing. It's one of my favorite, and it's also one of those hidden senses that not a lot of people know about. And so what it helps with is it teaches you where your body is in space, and you have little receptors in your joints and muscles that tell your body, this is where I am, this is what's going on. And it's a great system that helps regulate, it helps with organization of behavior and it's really important for our kiddos who struggle with self-regulation yes that's absolutely the case I see that a lot with my kiddos and so you know what does that look like what happens when the proprioceptive system isn't registering input properly so many things <laughs> Honestly, that's what's, that's what's the most challenging is because it shows up in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And each of our kiddos, they are so different and they're puzzles. Honestly, mm -hmm. they're, they're little puzzles that we have yep. to do. So one of the biggest areas that we see a lot of proprioceptive issues come in is the motor planning body awareness system. And so mm -hmm. what that means is a lot of kids will trip and fall. They will bump into things. They'll walk like leaning against the wall. They, they just struggle with knowing where their body is. They might push too hard. They might pull too hard. Mm -hmm. And they just really struggle with that awareness of, okay, this is where I am. I feel good where I'm at. I'm comfortable. Um, they just, they just seem to seek or avoid, and we'll go into that later, but they'll just seem to seek or avoid extra input, whether it's compression or stretching or touch or vibration. It's, they're just not processing it the right way. And, mm -hmm. and that's the biggest way that we see it. All right. So the next area that we see a lot of challenges in is the force modulation. So what that means is your kiddo might not know how much pressure they're using. They might use too much pressure. They might not use enough pressure. So if you think about writing, your kiddo might break the lead all the time, or you might not be able to see their writing because they're not pushing hard enough. Or another big one is when you're playing catch with your kiddo. You guys aren't playing catch with your kiddos. You need to <laughs> every day. <laughs> That's right. I totally agree. <laughs> but oftentimes the kiddos, they'll either throw way too hard and they mm -hmm. won't even recognize yep. it. Or they will just not throw Barely. It. Yeah. It's barely hard. leaves their hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So going along with that, another area is when kiddos are in school, they have to stand in a line yep. a lot. And a lot of times those kiddos who struggle with processing proprioceptive input, they will be uncomfortable standing in line. They don't know if someone's going to bump into them or they might be the one who is bumping <laughs> into everyone. Yes. yes. They're the kiddo that accidentally takes you out from behind. <laughs> so, yeah. And they're like, oh wait, what happened? Right. <laughs> So another area that occupational therapists work on is postural stability as it relates to that proprioceptive input. 
So this is, I, I keep saying these are big ones, but they're all, they're all so big and they all affect these kiddos. They all so matter. Mm-hmm. Yes. But for postural stability, that is the kiddo's ability to maintain an upright position, to feel comfortable um, while, they're, while their base of support is being challenged. So maybe they're on a therapy ball, they're sitting on a therapy ball, they're sitting on a swing, on a teeter-totter. Um, I'm sure you can think of a bunch of different ways. Some other examples would be going up the stairs or if your kiddo's riding their bike, you know, those are all examples of us relying on our postural stability to remain upright. Yes, because if you don't know where your body is in space, these kiddos are not going to want to ride their bikes. Yes. They're not going to be able to balance. They're yes. not going to be able to hold themselves upright. Right. Participate in all of these age appropriate activities. Right. And that affects, you know, their ability to socialize with other kids their age and to, you know, yes, exactly. Go make friends on the playground or, you know, all of these important things that we don't necessarily think about when there's this problem, you know, this one specific problem, we don't necessarily see how it affects all areas of their life. Yes. And that's one of my favorite things as an occupational therapist is to address the challenge, to see the challenge, mm-hmm. and then to address the underlying cause. Exactly. Just putting a band-aid on the problem. Absolutely. Very important. <laughs> so when it comes to processing our proprioceptive input, some kiddos will fall on the sensory seeking side and those kiddos tend to be under responsive to the input that they're receiving and on the other hand we have kiddos that are avoiding input and those are our over responsive kiddos so the sensory input that they receive their system has an over response to yeah. that input and they're like no thank you i'm avoiding that altogether yeah. so rachel you want to talk more about each of these and you know what that looks like in each of these kiddos all right so a lot of our kiddos they will seek that rough housing mm-hmm. they will crash mm-hmm. they will fall mm-hmm. they will bump into things they're seeking that deep input by falling and crashing and bumping into things. So that's how they're seeking it because their body isn't registering enough of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And all of those bumps and crashes are sending input input to their joints and giving their brain the information about where their body is in space. So, and I've talked to you guys about this before. Kai is a crasher. He's a proprioceptive seeker. So he loves bumping into things, you crashing, you know, And if you checked out the gift guide, that's why the bounce horse is on there. Like we'll get into all of this, but yes, that is your classic proprioceptive seeker. So another area that we see those sensory seekers come into play is with their ability to process oral input. Mm -hmm. It seems kind of weird, but when those kids chew on everything like zippers and their pencils or their erasers or you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. We are seeking proprioceptive input. And let me tell you what is interesting. I have always been a teeth grinder. Okay. I mm-hmm. I my teeth, I grind. Me too. And dentists all the time, they just said, Oh, you need a mouth guard. Uh-huh. And then as I learned more and more about the sensory system and the proprioceptive input, I'm like, I am seeking proprioception. That's what's happening. So how I remediate that is I chew a lot of gum. Mm -hmm. And that's a big one. That's how I survived the day is I chew a lot of gum. And we'll go into some more strategies a little bit later. But I just wanted to say that, you know, all of the things that these kiddos do, and even us as adults, it's relatable to the sensory system in Mm -hmm. some way. So on the flip side, let's talk about those sensory avoiders. Mm -hmm. So those kiddos who are over-responsive to that proprioceptive input. Those are the kiddos who kind of slip through the cracks and they are very uncomfortable. They don't take risks. Mm -hmm. They do not like to be on moving pieces of equipment. They might not even like to ride in a car. They are uncomfortable in their body and they're avoiding that proprioceptive input. They don't like to be squeezed. They don't like to be touched. They withdraw from touch. Mm -hmm. As you can see, all of these, I know you just talked about the tactile system, but all of these systems, they connect. They're related. They are related, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. 
So in addition, a lot of these kiddos fatigue quickly, they can't maintain weight-bearing positions, they have low endurance, they have lower muscle tone. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why their proprioceptive system isn't processing that input properly. Is they're just not getting those messages sent to their brain how they're supposed to be there. All right, so now we're moving on to the final part, and these are some strategies and ideas and tools that might help with your kiddo who's either seeking or avoiding. And so some of the stuff that we mention, we will put in a link down in the description box for you. Click on that if it's something that you can check out on Amazon or another website or link back to Rachel because I'm really excited to share some of the stuff that she does. I will put that all in the links down in the description box. All right, so this is the best part, you guys. It is. This is where all of the sensory strategies come into play. Mm -hmm. And to begin with, we talked about how your child doesn't know where their body is in space. So the first thing that you should be doing is heavy work. Mm -hmm. And what heavy work is, is it's giving your child compression and stretching to their joints. So this means you are wheelbarrow walking, you are crab walking, you are frog hopping, bear walking, animal walking everywhere. Mm -hmm. That is my all-time favorite strategy. It's and it's so walks great. Mm -hmm. It does. So that's heavy work. So another way that you can incorporate heavy work is with weighted items. Mm -hmm. it can be ankle weights, wrist weights, weighted blankets, weighted vests, mm -hmm. weighted compression bands, anything weighted to help them feel where their body is. And I will add that Rachel, this is what she does. She makes weighted vests and she makes weighted blankets. And we just had some sent over to Kai. And I cannot tell you guys what a difference it makes in terms of his ability to help regulate himself and the sense of calm he has when that blanket is over him. You know, I was telling Rachel earlier, I feel like his sleep is more restful sleep and uh, we're working on the vest. And so I'm gonna do a video later for you guys, give more in depth information about how this has affected Kai's life day in and day out, but it's huge. And you know, for Rachel probably made it because as she mentioned before, she's a proprioceptive seeker and so am I. And when I have Kai's blanket, I feel good. So it's, it's a yeah. wonderful way to help regulate that system. Yep. And like you said, I sleep with a weighted blanket too. <laughs> this is a little off topic. I apologize. But the other day I was introducing a weighted vest to one of my clients. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let, here, let me try this on and see how it feels. I ended up wearing it the entire session. Didn't I ask you, I said, you need to make one for adults because I, I would love something like that. It, it really does. It feels like the most giant hug it's and like hug. Yeah. It just, it's so calming. It's, right. it's great. I know. It's like, think about when you get home from work and you get a hug from mm -hmm. your significant other or from your child or from your dog. Yes. <laughs> that feel it feels amazing and you can let like all the stress from the day and the anxiety from the day go it's that sigh it's like your system going you know it's right another area that we like to incorporate climbing mm -hmm. so climbing on outdoor equipment climbing on parents climbing yes. siblings rock climbing going to the park and climbing they're getting that input in their joints and their muscles to help their body regulate and learn where they are in space absolutely it's a lot of pulling you know some pushing climbing up things you know as rachel said it's just um more intensive input getting into those joints to help them know where their body is in space absolutely. yes so a couple other strategies we want to recommend are joint compressions, which your child's OT can teach you, and the brushing protocol or the sensory brushing, which I know, Nicole, you talked about that in a past episode. It's great for the proprioceptive system Absolutely. as well. Hugs, big, big hugs. Uh, Steamrolling is one of my favorites where the kiddo lays under a therapy ball and you're rolling the therapy ball over their back. Mm -hmm. uh, Yoga is a great one. 
So, and as Rachel mentioned prior, you know, the proprioceptive system will affect different areas of our body, including your oral motor skills and your oral motor awareness. So some strategies, if you have a proprioceptive seeker and, you know, you find that they're chewing on pens or clothing or whatever else, try incorporating more crunchy foods or foods that are hard to break down easily, maybe like dried fruit strips, like dried mango strips. Um, you can also incorporate some blowing activities, blowing through straws, you know, making the soapy water. You put some dish soap and some water with some food coloring. Isn't that so much fun? I do have a video on that, so I will link that in the description box too. But those are all great ways of getting that intensive, you know, input and, and sensory information in the mouth up to the brain so you know they can help regulate their body and know where everything is and what everything is doing and yeah compression is another form of that heavy work that we talked about earlier so this means compression garments so those tight fitting clothing uh, body socks are great mm -hmm. lycra material is fantastic absolutely Home socks um another big, big factor for proprioceptive processing is vibration. Mm -hmm. So I love vibrating balls, vibrating ankle bands. Um, if you've seen those full body vibrating platforms, those are another yes. great way of like intense, intense yes. proprioceptive. Yes. Yeah, you there's like a, a knob that you can turn up so like the vibrations can start slow and it goes all the way up to like every cell in your body is vibrating. So yeah, it's it, it is a great tool to use. And then also with vibration, you have um the Z vibe. So that is like an oral motor probe or tool that some OTs will use. It's just like a vibrating stick and it helps wake the mouth up. Some of our, our kiddos that might be on the avoiding side, they may have lower tone. And so an OT might use that vibrating oral probe to help wake up their mouth. And that tool is used to help a kiddo that might be avoiding gradually accept more proprioceptive input. All right, you guys, I hope you found those strategies and you know that information about our proprioceptive system helpful. And I'm super grateful to have Rachel here with us here today. Thank you so much for being here and explaining your expertise so well and so clearly for all of us mamas uh, so that we can help our kiddos, you know, when we see some of these signs and we can implement some of these strategies and tools that you have so eloquently described for us. <laughs> it was my pleasure. I'm super Absolutely. excited to help everyone. Absolutely. And you guys, as I mentioned earlier, I will leave Rachel's information down in the description box below. She has some wonderful products and follow her over on Instagram because she's breaking down all of the things we're talking about and more on a daily basis. So links to all of this good stuff in the description box. Thank you, Mama, so much for joining us today. And I will catch you in the next Sensory Systems video. Bye. Bye.